Hello everybody, my name is Zane, and today we are going to take a break from the Autocraft server and take a look at 19 from 19 redstone circuits that are go from very basic to a little complex back to basics again. So let's get right into it. So to start off, you know, we're just going to look at the lever, which makes a continuous power to a redstone wire to the lamp, while a button makes a continuous power for a shorter for a short time. So while the lever does continuous, this does semi-continuous. And with that, with the button or the lever, you can power a block, which as a redstone torch normally gives off a constant power all of the time, unless the block it is attached to gets powered. So this would also work for a lever and it would be off forever until you turn it back on. So this is very useful in a lot of situations. As for this one, I have gone over this circuit before, and this is an AND gate because even though this one turns this torch off, the other one is still on. So we have to turn both of them off in order for this redstone dust here not to power this, which would turn that off. So if we turn one off, this redstone gust dust gets powered, which powers the block, which depowers the redstone torch. And yeah, a simple a simple end gate. And like from the second one right there, the button does an instant in this case it's an instant wire basically. I, there's almost no delay. But with the repeater you can have up to four tick delay. So you can have it be basically like a redstone torch or wire or you can have it be up to four ticks later, which makes it delay, pretty much. And this is your basic OR gate using the repeaters again, because if we power one, this redstone torch gets turned on. It doesn't matter which one is on or if we power both of them. As long as one of them is on, that redstone lamp will be turned on. And a little more complex version of powering a block is with this. So if you need to kind of reverse it, the wire and go up, you can do this. And what this does is with the lever, it powers this repeater, which powers this block, which turns off this torch because this torch is powering this block, which turns off this lamp. And since this block is no longer powered, it cannot power this repeater, which cannot power this block and this redstone dust, and therefore not this lamp either. Now to something that's a little more complicated. We have a comparator. So a comparator in its basic form takes the input power level of something and outputs that exact power level as well. So with this block, the redstone block gives off a power level of 15. As you can see with the first redstone dust there on the side, on the far right, power level 15. And because of that, this goes up to 15 blocks away, but will never power this redstone lamp there. And as you can see, all of these are turned, all of the lamps are turned on because the power level matches up with the length of those redstone lamps. And another neat thing to do with the comparator is say you have a hopper and like a minecart rail coming through, and you want to, you know, make sure the hopper minecart gets powered off or empties it out as it goes. How would you do that? Well, if you have a hopper here, if that hopper has anything in it, it will power the comparator, which powers the block, which depowers the torch, which turns all of this off in the redstone limb. And when that hopper is empty, it says, okay, this redstone repeater 
powers this block, which powers your powered rail, which sends the minecart back out to collect stuff. And another neat thing you can do with comparators is have a comparing output value. So with this comparator right here, because this block emits zero power, there will be a zero power output because it does not match with the input value that is coming from the side. But if I put the same power value as the output for this comparator, it powers the lamp. So as you can see, it only matters with what this block is powered by. And now we have the observer, which is actually pretty simple to understand, but the complexity of, of its usage is very important for a lot of more complex redstone machines. So basically, it detects any change that happens in front of it. So if I place a, a block in front of it, it powers it. If I remove the block, it powers it as well. So any change that happens to any, anything that happens in front of it will power anything behind it. And this is true for observers to observers. So if I were to power this uh, sticky piston right here, as you can see, since both observers are observing each other change their power value, as you can tell on the very right there, power is true false, switching back and forth. Each one of these is seeing that and powering and powering each other basically, which is powering the block, which powers the redstone. When you take it away, it depowers or stops the, the repetition. So another thing you can do is you can combine the two with a, you can find the observer and comparator. So you can take the signal output of a chest and relay it as an output string. So if we put even one item in, it will dispense. If we take that item out, it will stop dropping items. And as you can see here, that comparator is powered, which means that piston will go off. And as we saw on that one, it'll create a repetition signal. And you can combine slime blocks or honey blocks to make a flying machine. So basically, as this thing moves, these observers detect the change of in position, which power the block underneath it as from the back of it, from the back of it, this, this is the output part. So the output powers the block below it, which powers the piston. So if we turn this on, we can uh, see it fly off into the distance, not into the sun, but off into the distance. And another complex thing you can do with comparators and an observer clock is an item elevator. So basically, when any item is put into here, that comparator detects the new signal strength of, of one, which powers the block here, which powers this uh, repeater, which then powers this piston, which then does repetition again. And since observers power blocks, you can power a note block, which if you, if you have powered a note block, it creates a sound basically as powered on or off, which this observer can detect, which powers both of these droppers and it goes all the way up. So if we were to put our item in, as you can see, it dispenses it all the way up. This is a very basic dropper elevator, which is very useful in multiple things. And probably the most useful clock in the game is the hopper clock. So as you just saw there, when the output signal of from, when there's no items left in here, the signal to this drops, and that means this side can be powered because this side is no longer powered. So we should see any second now. Yep, so now that the clock is done, that means this is no, or, I guess you can say this is a repeated clock. 
so now that there's now that this redstone block is no longer no longer in this position, it can no longer power that. And now when this side empties, it'll flip it back, which then starts the clock all over again, basically. And however many items you have in here determines the length of between the pushing. And another basic thing you can do is an item um, item sorter. So we have this to only accept yellow wool. So if we put our yellow wool in, we can see we get an output of one yellow wool. But if we were to put dirt in, we'll see that the dirt comes all the way through. And normally you'd have these as filter items, say like a different name, because then if I put a block quartz in there, it goes in there and it changes the amount of items that you can store. And now for a very, 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 very useful circuit, the double piston extender. So basically, a double piston extender is you power this block, which push, which since this is powered, powers this one, which extends it, and then you power this one to extend it as well. So tick right down to, let's say 10 to really see this. So if in slow motion, we can see what happens. So this one gets powered first. And then this gets powered to push it out. And then when it comes back, this gives the signal to depower first. And then this one gets depowered and then this is depowered last, which then retracts it again. And last but not least is the confusing name T flip-flop. So basically, all the T flip-flop does is every time you press it, it does the opposite of what was pr of what was done before. So, this output here is not on, but when we press this, it makes it on, and when we press it again, it turns it off. So every press does the opposite. And it does this because um, this gets turned on, which powers this, which creates a one tick pulse. And a one tick pulse is basically, game. the game goes by ticks. So a one tick pulse is basically an instant, um, is almost an instant wire pulse. So because of that, this piston, this even though it's a sticky piston, doesn't have enough time to pull it and retract it. It 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 kind of basically freaks out and leaves the block there until the next time you press it. So we can kind of get a better angle this way. So even though it's a sticky piston, it does not like to. Um, it, it needs a longer pulse to extend and then retract the block in the same time frame, basically. And this is the most basic T flip flop you can get. There are a lot more compact ones, but I made it basic for this episode. So, if you guys enjoyed 19 circuits and redstone contraptions, that redstone flying machine is long gone, <laughs> make sure to hit the like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.